Hey my loves, welcome back to my channel. So today I have a beauty haul slash first impressions video for you. I bought a bunch of stuff from Sephora, from Ulta, and from like Colourpop and a bunch of different places recently and I thought I would just do one big haul and like um, test them out with you on camera at the same time. So like everything that's on my face right now I've tried out for the first time. Um, or like one or two products that I haven't tried out in a long time. So if, sorry if my makeup is not like as where I normally would wear it. Uh, because there are a bunch of new products on my face that I'm one, not used to, or two, didn't think it was the right fit for me. So let's just dive into this haul and this first impressions video. So the Unicorn Essence um, Primer, like I've been seeing this everywhere on Instagram, as I'm sure many of you have. And I honestly just didn't, I'm not the type of person to just jump on the bandwagon immediately because I feel like if it's a lot of money, then I have to hear a lot of good things about it before I purchase it. It's funny because if I got things that are working for me already, that I don't feel like I need to introduce anything, then I'm like, eh, I'll hold it off. And so recently I was just like, I'm going to buy a bunch of products that I feel like um, I want to test out and see if they're good and, and share my, my opinions with you guys and see if it's going to be helpful, helpful for you. So I originally thought this was going to be like super oily um, just because of the way it looks um, on camera and like from what I've seen in videos. But it actually wasn't. It was actually pretty moisturizing. Um, it had a really good smell. It dries a lot quicker than I thought it would. So when I was blending it out, I had to move a little bit quickly so I didn't get it to the rest of my face. And I had to use a couple more drops more than I thought I would have needed to. So the finish for this is slightly sticky and dewy, which is perfect for a primer um, and for before putting on makeup because you want something that's like more of a sticky finish so that makeup stays on it. Also, sorry if I sound weird, I know I'm tired and my eyes are like a bit red because it's been a long day, but I really wanted to get this video out for you guys. Um, do I think it's worth the buy? Um, I think people can live without it for sure. I think there are other primers out there that are bank friendly, um, but I think this is a really cute, it, one, it's, I love packaging, I love the, the, the way that the product is put in here and the way you can use it. It's pretty easy uh, to use, um, and I really do like the finish of the product. Uh, so I think it's worth it for me. I wouldn't say like, oh yeah, definitely go out and get it for yourself. I would say go out and try it to see if you like it. Um, but it's a really great product. I, I, there's nothing that I, I can say that against it. Um, and I was really surprised by it. So my next product is this Huda Primer. So I had got this originally. What I wanted to do was get the, um, the foundation at the same time. But the foundation was all up. But I was like, okay, let me just go ahead and get the primer ahead of time. And then I saw a couple of reviews on it saying that it wasn't all that great. And... Um, like the Becca primer or the I think it's I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, but I actually got it to the Jones jelly pack or Joan jelly pack or J1 jelly pack. I'm not sure how that's pronounced I think it's J1 jelly pack specifically I heard this I think from Nikki tutorials um, And I don't think she has dry skin. I had dry skin So it's really important to me that I use primers that are moisturizing and that are um, they're gonna keep me hydrated while I put on my makeup. So this Huda Beauty one didn't get a good rap, I think, from a couple of people, but I actually liked it. It was light enough on the skin, um, it was moisturizing enough, and it had that sticky finish as well, uh, which is great for makeup application again. One thing I have to note about this primer is that it has a strong smell. It kind of smells Christmassy, cinnamony. I don't know how to explain it. It's just a really, really strong scent, and it's a pleasant scent, but for anybody who's not into like strong, strong scents, um, just definitely make a note of that because I know that there are days where I'm going through my allergies and I can't have like perfume or candles or anything around me because any strong scents just make everything worse. So I feel like this is a product that would make it worse because it's such a strong, strong scent. I put the Huda primer on my left side. Um, I put the J1 or Joan jelly pack on this side and I use the Becker primer on my forehead. So, for this primer, it has a nice light smell, nothing too strong, um, and it has an extremely sticky finish. Like, when I mean sticky, I mean sticky. It felt like I was rubbing, like, you know, stick glue onto my cheeks. That's how sticky it was. I can see why people would love this because it creates such a strong primer base for your makeup to go on. Um, and I can imagine that this is going to keep my makeup lasting all day long. So I really like that. I really enjoyed this so far and I can't wait to see how it performs as I, you know, use it, um, frequently and use it like on night outs when I'm like, you know, going to be sweating or dancing or something. By the way, I probably will do an update, um, showcasing some favorite products and some things that people should definitely stay away from. So some of these might make it to that list. So if there's anything that I've ever recommended and after longer use don't like anymore, I will let you know.
And that's a great segue too. Make sure that you subscribe and stay tuned and don't forget to hit that bell so that you get notifications every time I upload a new video. Now, for this third primer I have here, I use the, this one is the Becca Velvet Blurring Primer. And I was very skeptical about this because I feel like anything that's like a blurring finish, I've never, it's never worked on me. Has it worked on any of you guys? Have you, have you guys found a product that has helped with the texture of your skin or the pores and reduced and minimized all of it? Because maybe I'm using these products wrong, but I get the slight blurring effect, but I want to see some like major like blurring effect. Like if I'm going to spend money on a product um, that's claiming to have that blurring effect, like I, I want to see it. When I look up close in the mirror, I want to see it. It had this silky powdery finish to it, so it was a nice to touch, but I, I already sensed that I felt like, okay, it has a drier uh, finish, it's probably gonna dry up my skin. And again, I struggle with really, really dry skin, so I need products that hydrate. I actually might end up returning this just because I didn't, I really did not like the finish of it off the back. Like I used it on my forehead and I already started seeing like flaking on my skin, which is not great. And I, I always exfoliate, moisturize, and hydrate and put sheet masks something like that before I put makeup on because my skin is so dry. Also note, I did try this, I tried applying it over the Huda and the J1 or J1 Joan um, primer and again, it, it still had like a, a drying effect. I didn't see much of a blurring effect also, so I'm not impressed. So moving on to foundation, I finally got my hands on the Huda uh, Beauty Foundation and I got the shade Gingerbread. I had swatched it, I had matched myself a while back in store um, when they actually read all out so I couldn't buy it, buy it there in store. Um, and I was darker at the time, but now I'm realizing that gingerbread is probably too dark of a shade for me. I probably need to go uh, like a shade down just because I felt like when I was putting it on, it was a lot warmer than I thought. It definitely did settle into my skin and oxidize, but still it was too warm. I needed to pat a lot of it away with um, a, makeup, a wet makeup sponge. Um, overall, it doesn't feel drying. It's pretty light on the skin. It has a nice smell. It blends out easily with a makeup sponge. Um, but one thing I did notice, close up, it definitely texturizes my skin again because I have dry skin and it is a matte finish. I was hoping that this um, foundation, because I did hear that it was not as um, mattifying as the Fenty foundation. Uh, so which the Fenty foundation, I did end up returning because after longer use, I was just like, yeah, it's a great foundation, but it's just texturizing my skin too much for my preference because I have dry skin and I don't like seeing all the details of my skin stick out. Um, and this is definitely less mattifying, but um, I, it's still texturizing my skin. I think that maybe next time I will just go in more heavier with the moisturizing before I apply it. And I am gonna give it another shot by trying a lighter shade to see how that does. Um, and I will get back to you guys on my final thoughts on it. Um, but from afar, from here, I think it looks great. Um, my husband was like, yeah, no, your skin seems a little off. I think he was thrown off by the shade that was probably a little bit too dark. Um, so yeah. So I picked this up after seeing, um, I believe it was Nabella that I seen use. Um, and normally I've used like anything from like lipsticks to, um, more recently I was, I have been using the, um, LA Girl Pro Concealer. Uh, and so I was like, let me go ahead and try this Maybelline Master Camo. First of all, I love the applicator. It is like the perfect applicator for doing things like this, especially using it around the eye area um, and the mouth area. This time around, I didn't use it around my mouth because I wanted to see how the Huda Beauty Foundation um, sat on my skin. And as you can see, I still see discoloration. So that's another note to make about the foundation. Um, but I did use it under my eyes and it definitely color corrected. Um, don't fully judge this right now because I did use a new concealer, which I'll talk more about later on. But this uh, this um, color corrector in itself is, is phenomenal. It's great and I think it's it's definitely a must have. Okay, now moving on to the concealer that I have on. I had the Shape Tape by Tarte. Um, I don't know how I feel about this because I, I've heard so many people talk so great, so many great things about it and a lot of my friends um, and family even have it and they love it. Um, maybe like I am such a... I'm very particular when it comes to my concealer. This shade, I got tan sand for uh, the Tarte um, Shape Tape, and I feel like it maybe it's a little bit more on the darkish side. I prefer a very bright under eye. Right now, my under eye is a mess, so don't judge it right now because I actually use this, and then I also use my other concealer to try to see if I could fix it because I didn't like the way it was looking. Um, I feel like it was a little bit more sheer than I anticipated it would be, and um, a little bit like, 
more darker than I thought it would be. I usually like to go for a brighter eye. So I think what I'm going to do is return this one, go the shade lower just to see how I like it um, and to see how it blends out and see if it was just maybe because I used this shade instead. For some more Huda products, I got this little cute Electric Obsessions palette. Um, I thought it was fun to like add some new colors to my collection because I, I feel like I've been staying closer to like the, the warm cranberry fall and orange and brown colors and I haven't um, strayed away from that in quite some time so I thought why not you know pick up this palette and do a couple tutorials with it, do something fun and different um, which I haven't done in a long time so expect some new fun tutorials coming your way. Um, although I have to say I was a little bit disappointed like I mean the colors are beautiful they're straight up beautiful um, they're just not um, as opaque or buttery as I prefer them like I think right now I think now I compare everything to my Lorac palette um, my mega 3 Lorac palette like the the I've had it for over about a year now and the eyeshadows are, are buttery they're still super buttery so they haven't dried out and gotten chalky I don't like eyeshadows that are chalky um, not saying that this is chalky at all I, I'm saying that it's a bit more on the I guess drier side than like the buttery side of eyeshadows color the colors are beautiful like I had to pack it on there though I like to use eyeshadows that I can just like swipe and it's like bang right there on your eye and on your lid um, maybe I need to be using a better primer with this kind of eyeshadow I don't know um, but the colors are beautiful once you pack it on there as you can see I use a couple of shades and uh, I think it's a great piece to have in my collection. I don't, I wouldn't say go out and you have to have it type of thing. I currently have um, the uh, Desert Dust palette and I love that. I love the colors in here too. Um, but I noticed that not all the eyeshadows have that same formula. So they, they vary from shadow to shadow. Um, the texture and the formula seem to be different from each different color. So I got two new Becca products. So, but I did try out this one, which is the Shimmery Skin Perfector Lilac Geode. Very pretty. I think it's only exclusive to Ulta only right now. Um, it's a very pretty color. Like, uh, it has like this gold pinkish shade on certain angles. In certain angles, it looks pink, like a dusty rose pink. And in certain angles, you can see that champagne-y um, gold. And it's such a beautiful highlight. I feel like this is a color, a highlight, a highlight that looks great on my skin tone. And I can't wait to test out these ones in here. So look out for um, videos coming soon on Instagram. I did swatch all these on my hand for myself. I didn't do it on camera, sorry guys. But I love each shade. Like they're so beautiful. Even the blush is gorgeous. And I especially love this like blue center one, which is perfect for um, like the winter like glowy looks. And I'm trying to see if I can show you on my fingertips like how they look, but they're so pretty. If you want to see like a real swatches video for this, let me know. Comment below because I will get the video out for you guys. Okay, this next item is Molly Mascara. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. I always say all these brand names wrong. Honestly, like I'm terrible. Um, but I think it's Molly, Mally, maybe. Um, anyways, I got this a while back in, I think, some gift bag of some sort. And I fell in love with it. And then I ran out and I never got it again because when I went to look up the price, it was pretty expensive. And I usually, my rule of thumb for mascaras is not to spend too much money because they have such a short shelf life. Um, but honestly, my, I'm again, I'm very picky with my mascara and... Every drugstore mascara that I've been using lately was just not doing it for me. Um, and I even had like a sample size of the Better Than Sex mascara, which I used to I used to use, use Better Than Sex mascara all the time before. Um, but I was found myself missing my Molly mascara, so I recently picked it up like after like, I don't know, about a year. So I got me a brand new Spankin' Molly mascara, and I love this mascara. It is It goes on nice and light without being too chunky, and it really gives length. Um, I don't say, it, it's really good on the volumizing, but I wouldn't say it's the best volumizing mascara, no. um, but as you can see from the before and after, like, there's a huge difference and I love this. Um, one key trick that I do have to recommend though, anytime I use any kind of mascara, I always have extra spoolies around to help me brush out my lashes so there is no chunkiness um, that creates that feather like lashes. And I do this with every and all mascaras that I use. that I have here are these two, um, setting sprays. So this one, I didn't spray it on yet, but I did spray it on for the camera, as you can see. 
it kind of looks like it's spitting out rather than being a nice mist. Um, and I think I'm going to try on this Cover FX Illuminating Setting Spray right now to see how it feels. Mmm, it's very misty, it's very light. Um, I feel like I had to spray a hundred times though to get it on. It says to shake very well, you can hear, you can hear the little things in there. And I think it's because of whatever formula they have in there that helps with the illumination. Um, probably naturally separates. Hmm, it looks pretty dewy, nice, what do you guys think? I feel like you need a lot though. Right now, I'm definitely feeling this illuminating setting spray by Cover FX though. And I love Cover FX, like I love their products. I have one of their highlighters and that thing is gold. It is liquid gold and it's probably one of my favorite highlighters ever. So for additional last pieces that I also got, I got a, a bunch of ColourPop stuff, some lip products and some highlighters. I also recently got, so It's My Ray Ray, if you guys follow her, she just launched a product with BH Cosmetics. So I just got that palette and came in. And those two I will be doing more of an in intense review and swatches in separate videos. So be sure to stay tuned, subscribe, hit the bell to get more no notifications every time I upload a video so that you guys can check out those videos as well. Other than that, that's all the products. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for listening to me ramble through all of this. I hope this was helpful. If it was, give it a big thumbs up. Let me know, comment below any of your thoughts. I want to hear from you guys because this is a community. Otherwise, I'm just talking into the thin air so if you are watching right now go ahead you know share your thoughts below I love you guys so much remember that you're absolutely beautiful and until next time bye Mwah.